All right, fam, things got very interesting in the stock market today. So what's going to happen now that rate cuts are on the table? Well, I'm going to dive into all of the details in this video. So let's get right to it. The long term neutral rate is 2.8 percent. We're currently sitting at 5.25 percent. Now, I've told you guys before that cutting rates too quickly is not really good if it's reactionary. It has to be proactive. There has to be a good supportive economy for cutting rates. Otherwise, it could be counterproductive to what we're actually trying to accomplish with inflation. We're going to be looking at about 12 to 18 months, more or less the latter, 18 months for this full rate cut to take effect. Now, this isn't going to happen all at once. This is going to be sequential. It, like This is going to happen over time. Can't just cut all of this once. There's no way that would work. However, we need to start cutting interest rates now. The job market will crash, and that's pretty much imminent without rate cuts starting right now. And the feds know this. The job market very well could be a problem. We've seen this with the fact that the PMI for manufacturing was down, but PMI for services was up. Inflation has come down from 9% to 2.9%, and 3% is pretty normal for inflation. In the context of this one, we had a stock market rally of 4%, roughly, like 4.5%. The issue is, how good will this be? How bad could it be? Like, what's going to be the outcome of these rates being cut now? How long is the cutting cycle? 12 months, 24 months, 18 months. How long is it going to take? And can the stock market handle these cuts? If the economy isn't strong enough and we don't start cutting rates quickly, it could be even worse. Yes, this could be very bad, but the issue is resolved if we are consistently cutting rates and everybody knows the plan. So the stock market, investors, the world, everybody is pervy to the information that we're going to consistently cut rates on X days throughout the year. Every quarter, we're going to cut rates by this amount. We price that into the stock market. There's going to be a lot of money coming over from money markets into the stock market every time the rates are cut. Another thing to think about is layoffs. Layoffs could cause a lot of problems. There's going to be big companies that are trying to save on labor costs and overall costs for the company by cutting labor and laying people off. Off, it's the Fed's responsibility to reassure them that now is not the time for this because we have interest rates that are going to be coming consistently. And as long as we're in the cutting, then everything will be okay and eventually return to normal. The geopolitical issues and tensions have cooled over the past few months. Geopolitical issues and global supply chain worries have cooled, so that doesn't seem to be much of an issue. The VIX is drastically down. It tanked, which is good, and we don't have a lot of volatility in the stock market right now, so the overall sentiment is improving. Most importantly, interest rate cuts help small businesses, which ultimately bolster and boost the economy greatly. So don't take my word for it. Let's listen to what Jerome Powell had to say. However, first, I want to talk about something right quick. I know this can be very confusing. Stock market sentiment, stock market news, technicals, fundamentals. It's a very difficult thing to understand as an entirety. If you guys are struggling in the market, which I once did, and I was flat broke five years ago, and damn near bankrupt, completely bankrupt, I was able to achieve financial freedom. I can buy the cars I want, just bought a new Land Rover. I've had Tesla, Shelby's, Hellcats, bought a new house, bought my mom a car. I bought my dad a car. I'm able to live the life that I've always wanted. Buy my kids dirt bikes, bought a new house for us, spend every day with my children and not have to go to work. If you guys would love to have financial freedom and you're having difficulties in the market, I would love to help you. I told myself when I achieve financial freedom, I would ultimately do everything I could to build a system that works to help you achieve your goals. You guys can sign up for my one-on-one -on -one coaching, Discord, and full training course at any time at investwithcorey.com right there on the screen or in the information box below. My students are doing very very well. Every student I have is making profits, some a lot more than others. It depends on how quickly you learn. I have students that are up several thousand dollars a week, some several thousand dollars a day. Most of my students are up anywhere from 10 to 15% in their first month. And I have other students that have peaked 25 to 30% in their first month or two. So if you guys would like to take control of your financial freedom, very serious mentorship, if you're interested, I am very dedicated to helping you achieve your financial goals. Like I said, you guys can sign up at investorcory.com right there on the screen or in the information box below. I look forward to speaking with you soon, fam. So quite interesting. As you guys can see, the interest rate cuts are coming. Things are looking better for the market. So let's begin with the current situation and the near-term outlook for policy. 
Our restrictive monetary policy helped restore balance between aggregate supply and demand, easing inflationary pressures, and ensuring that inflation expectations remained well anchored. Inflation is now much closer to our objective, with prices having risen 2.5% over the past 12 months. After a pause earlier this year, progress toward our 2% objective has resumed. My confidence has grown that inflation is on a sustainable path back to 2%. Low unemployment, high participation, historically low racial employment gaps, and with inflation low and stable, healthy real wage gains that were increasingly concentrated among those with lower incomes. Today, the labor market has cooled considerably from its formerly overheated state. The unemployment rate began to rise over a year ago and is now at 4.3 percent, still low by historical standards, but almost a full percentage point above its level in early 2023. Most of that increase has come over the past six months. So far, rising unemployment has not been the result of elevated layoffs, as is typically the case in an economic downturn. Rather, the increase mainly reflects a substantial increase in the supply of workers and a slowdown from the previously frantic pace of hiring. Even so, the cooling in labor market conditions is unmistakable. Job gains remain solid, but have slowed this year. Job vacancies have fallen, and the ratio of vacancies to unemployment has returned to its pre-pandemic range. The hiring and quits rates are now below the levels that prevailed in 2018 and 19. Nominal wage gains have moderated, and all told, labor market conditions are now less tight than just before the pandemic in 2019, a year when inflation ran below 2 percent. It seems unlikely that the labor market will be a source of elevated inflationary pressures anytime soon. We do not seek or welcome further cooling in labor market conditions. Overall, the, continue, the economy continues to grow at a solid pace, but the inflation and labor market data show an evolving situation. The upside risks to inflation have diminished, and the downside risks to employment have increased. As we highlighted in our last FOMC statement, we are attentive to the risks to both sides of our dual mandate. The time has come for policy to adjust. The direction of travel is clear, and the timing and pace of rate cuts will depend on incoming data, the evolving outlook, and the balance of risks. We will do everything we can to support a strong labor market as we make further progress toward price stability. With an appropriate dialing back of policy restraint, there is good reason to think that the economy will get back to 2 percent inflation while maintaining a strong labor market. The current level of our policy rate gives us ample room to respond to any risks we may face, including the risk of unwelcome further weakening in labor market conditions. After a historically deep but brief recession, in mid-2020, the economy began to grow again. And as the risks of a severe extended downturn receded, and as the economy reopened, we faced the risk of replaying the painfully slow recovery that followed the global financial crisis. After running below target through 2020, inflation spiked in March and April 2021. The initial burst of inflation was concentrated rather than broad-based, with extremely large price increases for goods in short supply, such as motor vehicles. My colleagues and I judged at the outset that these pandemic-related factors would not be persistent, and thus that the sudden rise in inflation was likely to pass through fairly quickly without the need for a monetary policy response. In short, that the inflation would be transitory. Standard thinking has long been that, as long as inflation expectations remain well anchored, it can be appropriate for central banks to look through a temporary rise in inflation. The good ship transitory was a crowded one. <laughs> With most mainstream analysts and advanced economy central bankers on board, I think I see some former, former shipmates out there today. <laughs> the common expectation was that supply conditions would improve reasonably quickly, that the rapid recovery in demand would run its course, and that demand would rotate back from goods to services bringing inflation down. For a time, the data were consistent with the transitory hypothesis. Monthly readings for core inflation declined every month from April through September 2021, although progress came slower than expected. The case began to weaken around mid-year, as was reflected in our communications. And beginning in October, the data turned hard against the transitory hypothesis. Inflation rose and broadened out from goods to services, and it became clear that high inflation was not transitory and that it would require a strong response if inflation expectations 
were to remain well anchored. We recognized that and pivoted beginning in November. Financial conditions began to tighten, uh, and after phasing out our asset purchases, we lifted off in March of 20, 2022. By early 2022, headline inflation exceeded 6% and core was above 5%. New supply shocks appeared. Russia's invasion of Ukraine led to a sharp increase in energy and commodity prices. The improvements in supply conditions and the rotation in demand from goods to services were taking much longer than expected, and I expressed our unconditional commitment to fully restoring price stability and to keeping at it until the job is done. The FOMC did not flinch from carrying out our responsibilities, and our actions forcefully demonstrated our commitment to restoring price stability. We raised our policy rate by 425 basis points in 2022 and another 100 basis points in 2023, and we've held our policy rate at its current restricted level, restrictive level since July 2023. Our restrictive monetary policy contributed to a moderation in aggregate demand, which combined with improvements in aggregate supply to reduce inflationary pressures while allowing growth to continue at a healthy pace. As labor demand also moderated, the historically high level of vacancies relative to unemployment has normalized primarily through a decline in vacancies without sizable and disruptive layoffs, bringing the labor market to a state where it is no longer a source of inflationary pressures. A word on the critical importance of inflation expectations. Standard economic models have long reflected the view that inflation will return to its objective when product and labor markets are balanced without the need for economic slack, so long as inflation expectations are anchored at our objective. That's what the model said. But the stability of longer-run inflation expectations since the 2000s had not been tested by a persistent burst of high inflation. It was far from assured that the inflation anchor would hold. Concerns over de-anchoring contributed to the view that disinflation would require slack in the economy and specifically in the labor market. An important takeaway from recent experience is that anchored inflation expectations reinforced by vigorous central bank actions can facilitate disinflation without the need for slack. This narrative attributes much of the increase in inflation to an extraordinary collision between overheated and temporarily distorted demand and constrained supply. All told, the healing from pandemic distortions, our efforts to moderate aggregate demand, and the anchoring of expectations have worked together to put inflation on what increasingly appears to be a sustainable path to our 2% objective. Disinflation while preserving labor market strength is only possible with anchored inflation expectations, which reflect the public's confidence that the central bank will bring about 2% inflation over time. That confidence has been built over decades and reinforced by our actions. That is my assessment of events. Your mileage may differ. So let me wrap up by emphasizing that the pandemic economy has proved to be unlike any other, and that there remains much to be learned from this extraordinary period. Our statement on longer run goals and monetary policy strategy emphasizes our commitment to reviewing our principles and making appropriate adjustments through a thorough public review every five years. As we begin this process later this year, we will be open to criticism and new ideas while preserving the strengths of our framework. The limits of our knowledge, so clearly evident during the pandemic, demand humility and a questioning spirit focused on learning lessons from the past and applying them flexibly to our current challenges. Thank you. Thanks so much, guys, for being here. Like I said, if you guys are interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching and you want to take control of your financial freedom, I would love to help you guys do that. It's what drives me every single day. You guys can sign up at investlecory.com right there on the screen or in the information box below. Thanks so much for being here, guys. Got another video, picked it out for you, and that video is right here. You guys are going to love it. Click that video. I'll see you over there. And remember, till the next video, let's grow our wealth together. Take care, fam.